Uh, well, everyone, uh, if you didn't hear me earlier, I'm Trevor Horn. I am the uh, lead director, so we have like three directors for FCA with Stephen Wagner and Dan Rosa for this college level. Uh, I'm also uh, the area rep for Fellows for Christian Athletes. So, and recently I've been thinking about, you know, what to talk about, right? You know, first FCA, everyone's excited, new new crowd, you know, freshman faces, bright and smiling. I'm just kidding, everyone smiles, but like, but anyways, smiles, you smile me too. Um, but just like, what to, really, what to, what to speak about? You know, what, Lord, what do you put on my heart? And honestly, I've, I've really been struggling with it. You know, call it is hard sometimes. It's hard a lot of times. And really, I've, I've gone through a process recently of just asking God, what are you doing to me? You know, God, what are you doing to me right now? Because we get so caught up in everything going on. You know, there's a million, we can always find a million things to do, right? But I'm always asking myself, God, what are you doing to me? And I've been... <laughs> Uh, four, about four months ago, five months ago, I got, I got brought on staff with Fellowship Christian Athletes. And so before, I was really excited. Like, I was like, yes. You know, get to do, get a little money on the side for what I'm doing. Like, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, come on. Um, but, uh, so I was, uh, I was really excited for that. But as the process went on, honestly, it's, it's become difficult. Because the reason behind that is that I've let, you know, we all know it's about a relationship with God, right? You know, it's about a relationship. It's about communication. A relationship is communication is key. And so it's just about, but what I found in myself is that as the more I've done ministry, the more I've let human expectation come into my, my own personal relationship with God. And human expectation in your own personal relationship doesn't work. When others are trying to tell you things or you're trying to work for something, something that you can't work for by the grace of God. So last couple months been me, like, trying to work for things, trying to say, all right, God, like, and then, see, the thing is, I'm a very organized person. And some of you smile right now because you're like, man, he's really organized. Yeah, and he's smiling a lot. Um, she knows how organized I am. But the thing about it is that, so, what I, on the process of me, I start putting God in my schedule. So, like, every day I'm running up the schedule. I'm like, all right, God, you can have, like, 2 to 2.15, like, three, maybe 3 to 3.30, depending on if I have a call or not. Um, maybe 6 to 7. And I've been writing God in my schedule. I've been putting him in a box, right? And that's the God of the universe, like... He doesn't really deserve to be in a box. But that's what I've been doing. And since school started, right? And since school started, it's gotten even worse. Like, I haven't been spending time on my word. Like, I haven't spent time praying. Because things get busy. Like, there's always, I can always find another thing to do outside of my relationship with God. And so, I've been, and honestly, for me, like, the last couple weeks, I've kind of gotten burned out a little bit. I've gotten burned out at times with my relationship. Because it hasn't been a relationship. And I don't know if you've ever felt burnt out or stale or just like you need like a, a renewal in your faith. That's how I feel. But luckily, uh, Ezekiel, the Lord would talk to Ezekiel. Um, on your little papers, I put a part of the verse. It's not the whole thing um, because I only get so many copies. So I had to cut it down to half a sheet. But, um, but Ezekiel 37 says, uh, so this is Ezekiel. This is the Old Testament. He is an Old Testament prophet. I don't know what you know about prophets. The prophet really is, I mean, obviously everyone knows, oh, he predicts the future, right? Well, yes, he does pre predicts the future, but also more than that, he is able to tell existing truths and what's going on in the, in the generation that's going on right now. And so Ezekiel 37 starts out, um, verse 1 says that, The Lord took hold of me, so Ezekiel, and I was carried by the Spirit of the Lord to a valley filled with bones. Sorry, wait, the valley filled with bones. Like, I, I grew up, I want to be a paleontologist. You know, I fell off from that because I'm doing ministry now. But, I, you know, but I wanted to be a paleontologist for a long time. I watched Jurassic Park. Like, that was my movie. But anyways, uh, so the valley filled with bones. So verse 2 says, He led me all around among the bones that covered the valley floor. They were scattered everywhere across the ground and were com completely dried out. Then he asked me, Son of man, can these bones become living again? It's like, this is a weird sight, right? Ezekiel's probably like, Lord, what are you doing right now? Like, you know, what you, what's going on? So he's seen these bones, right? He's seen a dried out valley. I don't know if you can visualize that right now, but um, what Yakima? Yes, it's like Yakima. I've been to Yakima before. It's like that. Eastern Washington is like that. You know, add the bones in there, and you got it. Um, seems that. Uh, so he goes on. So he says, "Oh, sovereign Lord," I replied, "You alone know the answer to that." Well, he's like, "Yeah, God, you know all the answers." Like, come on, like, don't play games with me right now. But then, so verse four, he says, "Then he said to me." Speak a prophetic message to these bones and say, Dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Look, I'm going to put my breath into you and, you will, and make you live again. I will put flesh and muscles on you and cover you with skin. I will put breath into to you and you will come to life. 
then you will know that I'm the Lord. So verse 7, so then, so obviously he's giving, the Lord's giving instruction to Ezekiel, right? He's giving instruction, hey, do this. Do this, it usually works. You know, it works pretty well. So verse 7 says, so I spoke this message just as he told me. Suddenly as I spoke, there was a rattling noise all across the valley. The bones of each body came together and attached themselves as complete skeletons. Then as I watched, muscles and flesh formed over the bones. Then skin formed to cover their bones, but they still had no breath in them. Verse 9, then he said to me, speak a prophetic message to the wind, son of man. Speak a prophetic message and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, O breath, from the four winds. Breathe into these dead bodies so they may live again. Verse 10, so I spoke this message as he commanded me, and breath came into their bodies. They all came to life and stood upon their feet, a great army. And then we jump down to verse 14, it says, I will put my spirit in you and you will live again and return home to your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and I have done what I said. Yes, the Lord has spoken. And so really, as recently, as I've gone on a process to ask myself, God, what are you doing? God, what are you doing? I've been thinking about these dry bones. And I've been thinking about myself, honestly, as I've been reading this as the dry bones. Like, recently, I felt dried out. I felt weary. I felt like I needed something else. But what I love in this story is that has God's heart comes out. God's heart comes out of the story. Because if you don't know yet, God's heart is life. God's heart is life. He wants to renew you. He wants to make you new. He wants to give you life. Yes. And so when I was in, a lot of times we don't see it though, because we get so distracted. We get so distracted by everything going on, homework, school, sports, friends, whatever it is. We get so distracted. And for me, I got my human expectation going in here in my own relationship. And so the verse of read again verse 14 uh, says I will put my spirit in you and you will live again I love this verse because he doesn't say oh you're going to live and then somewhere along the process I'm going to put my spirit in you somewhere you know it'll come along no he says I will put my spirit in you and you will live again like that's a promise if I, if I remember everyone that's a promise from God that you will live but all you have to do is find all you have to do is just turn to him turn to him and just look at him because he's breathing life in you I promise you that He's breathing life in you. He's talking to you right now. Are you listening? For me, I've had to find, I've had to, you know, in my past schedule, whatever else, I just make sure I find time for God. My daily cross, I'm going, I'm saying, all right, God, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? I've been asking myself that. And I, the last week or so, I felt revived, guys. I felt revived. Because every day, yes, I don't know, I'm not perfect. None of us are perfect. By the grace of God, God is breathing life into me. God gives me another step. God gives me another opportunity. And so I love this verse. It says, I'll put my spirit and you will live again and return home to your own land. And as I've been praying on God's heart for what he is, like, guys, I put one note in my Bible today. It says, God heart is, God's heart is life. I call God. I don't got a lot of notes here. God's heart is life. <laughs> like, because every day. And on this campus, I don't know how many of you were at um, the Awakening event a couple weeks, whatever else. And when I came in my freshman year, and a couple of you can attest to this too, when I came in this group, we had six football players. I love it still, but it was six football players upstairs um, in like this room up in the sub, and we we'd get in every two weeks. Taylor's fine too. There there was a, there was a couple girls too. Don't worry, they came along later. But um, <laughs> sorry, Taylor. Uh, but there's okay. There's six, seven of us. Um, six football players and a girl. But <laughs> <laughs> but the thing about it, guys, is that we we had there's seven of us, right? There's eight of us. There, the group grew like twelve or whatever else. But for me, it was just like seeing what God is doing. Look around this room. There's more than seven in this room right now. God is stirring something up on this campus. If I could speak over you guys right now, God is doing something on this campus. Believe it. Like, I got told when I was coming from high school, I went to toilet, or can't talk. When I was coming from high school, people would tell me, oh, you're going to UPS. I went to private, conservative Christian high school, you know, and they, they would tell me, oh, you're going to UPS. Oh, you're going to UPS. Like, one of those kind of things. And I don't believe that, guys. Look around this room. Believe what God's doing. Believe what he's doing on this campus. He's raising up dry bones. He's breathing life into a campus. And it's not going to stop. I promise you that. But it takes each of us just finding him. Seeing that breath. See that breath, guys. I promise you it's there. I promise you he's breathing on you. The promise that, the problem that I've had is that I haven't seen, I haven't looked at him breathing on I me. Mean, I haven't heard. I haven't just spent time saying, all right, God. Because I promise you when you spend a little bit of time, just give him a little bit of time. He is breathing life onto you. He's bringing life onto you and this campus. 
And man, if the Warsaw team could come up actually set up right now, Warsaw team. Um, the other two, so two weeks ago, uh, we were flying, we were flying back from, uh, or I guess a week ago, flying back from Chapman in California for football. Yeah, um, I don't know who's the boo, but I, I mean, <laughs> uh, <laughs> awkward, uh, awkward idea. Uh, so the on the on the fly back though, you know, I was I was trying to write a little bit, I was trying to take some notes, whatever else, what I was going to say. I was trying to take some notes what I was going to say. <laughs> so, uh, so, anyway, so I was trying to take notes on what I was trying to say, right? Um, and every time there's there's this mom and her little kid, like, I don't know, kids like this song. I'm, I'm not one for age, but I figured it was like one or two, whatever it was. <laughs> okay, it was like, it was a baby, right? Um, that could walk, it was, like, it was like a kid. It was like a toddler. It was a toddler, yes. Um, <laughs> So okay, we had a toddler, there's a toddler, right? And this mom, every time she'd walk her toddler up the aisle, she'd grab her little toddler, grab her two hands, and she'd just, I guess, keep saying her. But she'd, <laughs> she'd, uh, she'd walk her down and up the aisle. And like, when you see that, like, you can't help but smile. Like, when you see a little kid, right, you can't help but smile. Like, it brings joy to you. Like, it puts a smile on your face. And that's what new life does. When you see new life, it, you can't resist. Like, you have, I, I giggle a little bit. Like, you can't stop, right? But my thing about it, guys, is that that is what new life does. And that's the life I'm talking about. That's the life that God is providing for you. That is the life that God is breathing onto you right now. Daily. It says His mercies are new. It says His mercies are new daily, every day. And it means that His grace is new every day. <laughs> well, I don't know where we lose it sometimes. The older we get, I lose it sometimes. You know, where we lose it when we, we see those little kids and that joy and that happiness. But I promise you that's in there. I promise you that's inside of you right now. Because God has put it there. And he's renewing every day. Because God's heart is life.